Welcome back to Friday with Mr. B. And we're looking at grand corruption that is really not outside, but that is with us and even in fact inside of us. When you lose a loved one because they were operated by, operated on by a doctor who got into the profession in corrupt ways, do you laugh about it? When you lose a whole generation because of corruption, you cannot definitely laugh about anything. So definitely when we're talking about corruption, there's nothing comic about it. Mr. B, we were looking at the area of corruption yes. and how people have really treated it as a normal part of life. Mm. Take us to the other yes. serious part yes, of it. Yes, yes. Let's imagine now a doctor has bought the papers all through for exams to qualify as a doctor. And because he has believed in money, he tells a patient, I think you need surgery. Because surgery, you need to pay 500,000 as opposed maybe to 5,000. That operation is going probably to cure that patient. And when that patient is dead, he is going to follow the, uh, that payment. Because hospital will not release the dead body without the and without the payment. That's what it means in terms of seriousness. And when you have other many, many people who are buying those certificates to perform certain things, even to be an engineer who puts a bridge, yeah? Uh, so many people are going to die. When a ho whole hospital, you go there, you find that uh, even equipments don't work because the real one was stolen. They are somewhere in a private place. I knew cases when I, many years when I was the hospital, somebody had stolen even the whole X-ray machine from Kenyatta Hospital. Yeah. So there's a national hospital and uh, what will happen to people who come and they are very sick and there is no x-ray machine. Uh, when you also remember one of the doctors, so-called doctors, who was sedating women and raping them, all these are elements of corruption. Take like children, thousands go to school. And teachers, although they ask money, they don't really spend time giving serious education to these children. Why? Because they are going to give them a tuition where they are paid more money. So are they going ever to teach all this, especially the poor in millions, who is going to care about them? So this corruption spells death of a nation. And I've tried before to give you example of Liberia during that time uh, when it went down, uh, Taylor, you remember, Taylor. Charles Taylor. Mm. It got to the point that everybody was doing corruption and it had got out of uh, control. And at the end, even army were lending their guns for various reasons. They were even uh, lending the their uniform, 
And it got, even Taylor himself got scared and they ran out of the country. Because now that corruption was swallowing everything and everybody. And that's where Kenya, we, we have opportunity now to stop it. And in stopping this, we need to do a number of things. One, we stop this idea of lamenting and scapegoating. Because when we say that is the scapegoat, if action is taken, we feel good. We are inoculated now against mm. corruption. Yeah? But it's still there. It is still there. So we need to start strategic partnerships. And this is why I say, like now media that would commit themselves to fight corruption, we come together. Serious commitment. And we must, uh, each media must say that if the members of that media house solicit corruption, this is where it should be reported. Yeah. After that, we join up with others who are making the same commitment, like all these small businesses. You start getting those who say no to corruption and also individuals who say no to corruption. Uh, I can think of like Transparency International, anti-corruption. Uh, you start having a critical mass of people and there are people, even police, I'm sure, who don't practice corruption. If we identify them, we start working together. And we make sure, if we know this institution is the one that is really becoming uh, excessive, if we go there and we are 500,000, all these meetings they are calling like now at Uhuru Park. Yeah. Those are the meetings we should now go to that particular place. Yeah. Not because that individual belongs to a certain party or, or tribe. Mm -hmm. We go with the, because we have been gathering data, people reporting. Today, I'm at KRA, this is what's happening. Today, I'm in land ministry, this is what is happening in terms of corruption. Th those are some of the few areas where we become the one policing. We as people of Kenya who are feeling very bitter and very committed now to change this course. All right, there's the, that place of coming together and making that commitment. I have a bit of a concern, especially in terms of media yeah. and the political yeah. figures. Yeah. Because a Kenyan watching yeah. has no idea whether this media station yeah. is, has actually been paid yeah. to tell them that particular story. Yeah. So what, what is your word to that Kenyan watching? How can they develop that critical thinking yes. where they're able to say, no, no, this is, no, this is not right? Yes, yes, yes. I, I think you have to ask questions. Eh? Uh, over a period of time, we establish a certain consistency. Like if you have, uh, if you watch a certain media and 95% uh, is always something again is say code then you start to say there is something not right because even code is many people if on the other hand you see 90 percent is against the uh, jubilee on issue of corruption you wonder how do you isolate corruption in terms of uh, opposition and a government that this government is corrupt but the opposition is clean or opposition is corrupt 
but the government is clean. I, I think a uh, media that serves those stereotypes is already corrupt. Media should always be objective. It is, should not be deceived by the labels people put. Because first you put a label, then you start blaming. And it will be used even during the election. Right, right. In fact, that's where my concern is. Yes. Because if we have media stations that are already corrupt, yeah. what should Kenyans do? Turn off the televisions or walk to their, those stations? What can they do as a proactive move? Yeah, they should, uh, <laughs> they should decide that if you don't stop being corrupt, we will move to another station. Yeah? Where we believe that is serving the interest of Kenyans, whatever it is. I think people have to start also saying, uh, we are going to switch off. Because the further state was to become part of governance, equal to judiciary, co-equal to uh, legislature, exactly. co-equal to executive. So we are the further state. And uh, we were to start between the public and uh, these institutions. And uh, our commitment and the loyalty was to be to the public. And uh, to, to tell the public the truth. And the truth is made of series, series of facts that are true. That's what established is true. So we, we need to, to, to think outside the box and outside stereotypes. And the media is caught in now currently in that. We have to free ourselves and become the real fourth estate. The real fourth estate. Yeah. The real fourth estate. It's very clear here on Friday with Mr. B. And as WTV, in fact, you, you watch us, there is a clarion call. And we're saying, number one, if you experience any kind of corrupt activities around you, you can take the details of the moment, the people involved, and you can send to the number on your screen. At the same time, as WTV, we want to make it clear that we don't just want to point fingers, but we want to also make sure that our hands are clean. So we're also saying if any one of our members is caught in any kind of corrupt deals, you as the viewer and supporter of this television station, you can actually also send the details of that person to the number on your screen and definitely action will be taken. Remember, we are not just working alone. We are in partnerships with different organizations, including Transparency International. In fact, in a couple of weeks, uh, we'll be having uh, the chair coming to talk and different partners who are involved and dedicated in the fight against corruption. So Friday with Mr. B, all the time here, we are talking about making this country a better place, not only for ourselves, but for our children and their children and making sure that this country remains our home, where we call it our motherland. So let's meet next time, Friday with Mr. B. All the best.